Hello everybody and welcome back to the Wattpad Book Club. My name is Phoenix and once again I am joined with Minho. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's been a hot minute. <laughs> I think it's been a while. I think the last one was like a month ago. <laughs> mm-hmm. That, that's a long ass time, especially since I'm always recording with other people as well. <laughs> but uh, we're back to read more Harvey X Reader because uh, we can't get enough of this uh, sexy doctor. <laughs> At least I can't get enough. <laughs> oh god, I forgot how much I read. Well, we'll see uh, after I read off on the last chapter. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I. What happened the last chapter? It's been a hot minute since we've read this, so I don't remember. <laughs> like really much anything yeah I think wait did we get injured and like slimed that's the only part I remember all right cool that, that's all I remember too. <laughs> oh that's really bad that we only remembered us getting injured <laughs> <laughs> oh God. well we're back and with uh, chapter 7 welcome to your new home uh, let me. <laughs> I'm gonna do the exact same thing I did with uh, with Kenzie. <laughs> with the ob like I was trying to find an object to flip that has two sides, and the first thing I landed on was my credit card. So we're gonna flip that. <laughs> Go for it. Yeah. Do you want to be the side that has the wacky three digits on the back, or do you want to be the side that has my whole account number? <laughs> <laughs> um. Hmm. Could you uh, read out the account number? Maybe that way I'll know uh, which side I want. Oh yeah, yeah, it's uh, two 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 two. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be the wacky digit side. All right, let's see. All right, it's the wacky digits on the back. Does that mean? Wait, does that mean I read first yeah, that or means you read you first? Read. That, that okay, means okay, you okay. gotta do this shit. <laughs> I keep forgetting if I win, then I read. Oh. <laughs> All right, gotcha. Okay, chapter seven, welcome to your new home. Parentheses, sorry for the ch shorter chapter today. Something tells me this isn't going to be a shorter chapter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, over the past three days, Robin had been constructing a new chicken coop for you on your farm. The day had finally come where it was finished and it looked perfect and ready to home several new little chicks. It's all ready for you, Robin beamed. You admired her work. The coop was lovingly crafted. It looked very sturdy and had a charming red roof. You couldn't help but feel grateful for Robin's hard work and craftsmanship. The chicken coop was the perfect addition to your farm, and you couldn't wait to fill it with happy, clucking chickens. Robin takes the time to explain the features of the coop to you, including the feeding troughs, the nesting boxes, and the perches for the chicks to roost on. She advises you to talk to Marnie and Shane, who have experience of looking after chickens to ensure that they are well kept and happy. Thank you so much, Robin, you beamed. I'm so you glad make your way... that like, you read it first, because <laughs> I feel like if I read the happy clucking chickens, I would have read happy fucking chickens. <laughs> <laughs> I, there was like something in the back of my mind that actually re replaced the word clucking, but I just pulled through. Yeah, I'm glad you did, because I, I started laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Cause like clucking kind of makes it sound like you're trying not to cuss. <laughs> yeah, I, I barely use that word, clucking. Yeah, like I think I used that word like seven years ago. Why exactly seven years ago? <laughs> I, I don't know. I was uh, I was exaggerating. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you so much, Robin. You beamed. You made your way to Marnie's, ready to buy your first hens. As you enter the building, you're greeted by the warm smile of Marnie. Hello, Bill. What can I do for you today? I'd like to buy some chickens, you say, a subtle excitement bubbling up inside you. Marnie nods, leading you over to a pen filled with fluffy, clucking birds. <laughs> These are our finest hens. They'll lay plenty of eggs for you. How many would you like? You survey the chickens, admiring their vibrant feathers and curious gazes. I think four should be enough to start with. Marnie nods, reaching into the pen and scooping up four chicks. These chicks are all healthy and happy. I'm sure they'll do well on your farm, she beams. You thank her and hand over the payment for the chickens. 
Careful, uh, carefully carrying them back to your farm in a sturdy box, their heads peeking over the edge. You can't help but smile at their adorable faces and squawks. Is that how you spell squawks? I have Dude, you should no ask idea. me how to spell things. I am so bad. <laughs> As you set the box down in the coop that Robin has built for you, the four little chicks cautiously peer out, ready to explore their new environment. You know it will take even more work to look after them, but the thought of caring for them and having your own fresh eggs every morning to cook and provide makes it all worth it. Hey, there you go, you stay in pride as one chick decides to finally wander out from the box. The first chick starts an incentive for the other chicks who follow cautiously glancing around. You lift up the box and smile as the chicks begin to explore their new home. Alright, I'll popcorn you here. Alright. The day was passing and the sun was shining bright on your farm as you tended to your crops. You wiped the sweat from your forehead and stretched your back, feeling satisfied with the work that you've done so far. Suddenly, you notice a figure in the distance making their way towards your farm. As they get closer, you realize it was Mayor Lewis! That bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon, Bill! He greeted you warmly as he approached. I hope I'm not interrupting anything important. You shook your head, curious as to why the mayor had made all- had come all the way to your farm. No, not at all! Is there something you need, Mayor Lewis? Yes, actually. I came to speak to you about the upcoming luau. I'm so glad I know how to read. <laughs> it does say luau. Like, Let's go! I was like reading that, and I was like, wait, how do you pronounce that again? And then you said it, and I remembered that I actually looked up the pronunciation. I was like, oh yeah, it was a luau. Yeah, that- if you asked me to spell luau, it would not look like that. It would be like L O O O W. Yeah. <laughs> it's, Luau. The, it's the biggest event of the year, and we want to make sure it goes off without a hitch. You nod in understanding, slightly unsure of what the Luau even was. What can I do to help? Well, we are needed some fresh produce for the even for the event. I know you're a skilled farmer, so I was wondering if, if you could contribute to some of your crops for the feast. It would be more it, We'd be more than happy to compensate you for your efforts, of course. You felt proud of having that title now. Fuck yeah, we're like leveling up. We got like farming skill, farming level five. <laughs> <laughs> you considered the offer for a moment before agreeing. You knew that depending on how much produce you needed, it can be a big task. Sure, I'll be happy to help out. What kind of crops are you looking for? Mary Lewis pulled out a list from his pocket and handed it to you. Here's everything we need. You'll be providing the ingredients for the main course, which would be a vegetable stew. And, I have to say, Harvey's been talking nonstop about the quality of your vegetables lately. I have a feeling your contrib yeah, contribution- I know how to read, yes! There you go. <laughs> I know. I'm gonna need, like, to get, like, a chalkboard. Not a chalk- yeah, maybe a chalkboard, like a whiteboard, and just, like, give myself a little point when I can pronounce hard words. <laughs> 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 it will make all the difference. You blush, feeling slightly fuzzy inside at the mention of his name. <laughs> the thought of Harvey recommending your crops to others in the town with no expectations in return from you uh, made a small smile escape your lips. <laughs> Harvey said that? You questioned. Well, yes. Why do you seem so surprised? He pondered. You shook your head. No reason. No reason. Yeah, <laughs> we're like be I can see it now. Bill Cipher is fucking like beat red. <laughs> you smiled, feeling a sense of pride to your work. Thank you, Mayor Lewis. I'll make sure to bring everything to low out on time. Great, he said, looking relieved. I knew we we could count on you. I'm grateful for Harvey's recommendation. Now he beamed. You chuckled to yourself, feeling a flutter in your stomach at the thought of seeing Harvey again. Fuck, we like him. <laughs> Harvey. Let's go! <laughs> As you went back to your work, you couldn't help but look forward to the luau, wondering what the event had in store for you this year. Hell yeah. Be the first to comment. We gotta comment on some of this shit afterwards. <laughs> I love the title of chapter 8. It's good, good soup. <laughs> hmm. Good soup. Yeah. Oh shit. I, I don't know if you ever seen the meme. I don't remember the the actor's name, but I believe he played Kylo Ren in Star Wars. 
But like, he in a movie, like, he was eating soup, and he just like, eats it, sets down the silverware, and he's like, good soup. <laughs> so that sort of reminded me of. <laughs> what was his name? I wanna look it up now. Oh, Adam Driver, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. his name was. Yeah. <laughs> I just remember, like, there's two scenes of him eating eating food that I remember is the, the one I just mentioned, the good soup one, and then he's got, like, a plate of nachos in front of him, and just out loud, he just goes, I just had sex, I'm about to eat nachos! <laughs> <laughs> that guy's so For funny. some reason, Adam Driver sounds like an alias name. Like really? Peter Parker. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, you're right, that does sound like an alias It's <laughs> like name. Adam Driver. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds like some stupid shit like Phoenix Flare. <laughs> 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 oh god, well, <laughs> chapter 8, good soup. Alright, so let's, I, I guess it's your turn, I'm popcorning it to you. Alrighty. You had spent a lot of time preparing your finest produce, the annual luau. You had completed the mayor's list and had delivered the crops too. As you arrived at the beach for the annual luau, you were greeted by the townspeople who had set up a grand feast of grilled fish, salads, and desserts. The aroma of the food and the sound of the waves crashing against the shore filled the air. As you make your way through the crowd, you spot familiar faces from Pelican Town, all dressed in their best outfits. Mayor Lewis was subtly overseeing the preparations, the governor by his side chatting away. You knew about the governor's opinion on the town meant a lot to Lewis, and therefore you wanted to ensure that produce you produced for the soup was of an outstanding quality. That was kind of a tongue twister. Yeah. There's two different pronunciations of produce. The produce for you produced. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Your eyes scan the crowd looking for your friends. You see Shane chatting with Gus while Haley and Abigail are dancing to the music being played through a small stereo. Why the Gus fuck are we- <laughs> wait, I'm sorry. <laughs> It said that we were looking for our friends, so why did we look at Shane? <laughs> <laughs> the first name is you looking for your friends, Shane. Yeah, no, I don't like that. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Across the way, you see Elliot sitting under a tree, lost in thought, with Leia by his side. Everyone seemed to be having a good time already. In moments like this, you truly saw how unified the community was. Everyone liked one another and wished nothing but the best for each other. You continue to scan the crowd of townsfolk. Your heart flutters as you catch sight of Harvey talking with Maru and Robin through tables. Your gaze lingers on him for a moment before the realization that he is with Maru again sets in. You see Maru laughing at something he said, and you feel a twinge of jealousy just like before. However, you reminded yourself that Harvey is just your friend and that he's allowed to talk to other people. <laughs> you took a deep breath and walked over to the food tables to grab a plate, your stomach rumbling. As you topped it with delicious foods, you couldn't help but steal a few glances at Harvey, who seemed to be enjoying himself. You smiled to yourself, happy to see him having a good time, even if it's not with you. There you go. Hell. You can talk to other women. Yeah. <laughs> Girl, I don't think he's into Mario like that, but go off, Queen, I guess. <laughs> Bill, I must say, your vegetables looked amazing. You turned to see Marnie beside you, smiling as she spoke. Oh, thank you, Marnie. You replied, beaming in pride of your hard work. You had been paid a fair commission for your produce, the majority of which you would be reinvesting into the farm and the house itself. I bet the soup will be delicious, she chuckled, leaving you to your devices. Yo, we should right. throw the- we should throw Mayor Lewis's shorts in there! Can you do that? Yeah, you can do that in the game. If, like, um, you have to accept, like, a quest for, like, he's like, Hey, I left my shorts somewhere, can you go find them? And then if you grab them- I you remember that, them. actually, yeah, it was, like, in, uh, Marnie's bedroom, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, like, you can be nice to give it back to him and get, like, the money, or you can keep it and, and throw it in the luau soup. Oh my god, what does he say? Uh, like, the, like, the governor, like, eats it, and he's like, mm, this is pretty good soup, wait a minute, what's this? And he, like, pulls it out, and he's like, uh, and he, like, gets sick. <laughs> oh <laughs> he's, god. Yeah. Oh, it's so it's funny. funny <laughs> I kinda wanna do it on our, on our Stardew Valley farm. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah, absolutely. Alright. I wanna see what he says. Alright, yeah, I'll popcorn right. you here. I see, I see. <laughs> 
Soon after the soup was ready to be served, the governor taking the first taste. It was a tense moment for both you and the mayor. Lewis just wanted to impress the governor, whereas the possible blame of the soup not tasting nice would be on your shoulders. Yeah, as soon as he's like, mm, this tastes like, like shit. He's like, it, 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 Bill did it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like shit. It must be Bill. It has yeah. to be. Yeah. Yeah, Bill gave us all the vegetables. Uh, it must be uh, her fault. <laughs> if I remember, you can like put anything in the soup in the game. Yeah. You, you, you put like eat... fucking milk in, like rocks. <laughs> I think as long as it's edible, you can put anything in there. So you could throw in a sea cucumber and poison them. <laughs> Oh, it's so funny. <laughs> the governor made his way over to the pot. He took a spoonful of the soup. The crowd was silent with anticipation. This is delicious, he explained. A feeling of relief washed over you. It seemed that the rich flavors of the herbs and vegetables blended together perfectly. He took another spoonful and nodded in approval. He turned to Mary Lewis, who was also beamed. What's your secret ingredient? Lewis You're short. <laughs> Wait, what did you just say? Your shorts. Uh, <laughs> you put in your shorts. Yeah. That's why it's so good. Yeah. I think that's what happened. He's like, man, this is really good. And then he pulls it out. <laughs> <laughs> Lewis smiled and replied, It's a family recipe that has been passed down for generations. You felt a rage build up inside you as Lewis took credit for the soup and vegetables that had been specially grown and selected for it by you. Harvey had noticed the mayor's words knowing that he was lying, and was now glancing at you to see your reaction. However, you did not visibly show your frustration and kept the smile on your face despite the... Uh... <laughs> Arrogance. Arrogance, thank you. <laughs> Lewis. Oh, uh, you should- I Minus wish I had- Minus one tally on the chalkboard. Yeah. I should- I should have, like, a tally of, like, words I pronounce and then words I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> God, I wish I had face cam for that. You you would have seen my face freeze and like try to process how to read. You're like squinting your eyes. But yeah, I'm like like the old lady with the glasses trying to like lean in, just. <laughs> <laughs> the governor smiled back and said, "Well, it's certainly one of the best soups I've ever tasted." Everyone gathered around the soup and began to grab servings of it for themselves. You decided to hold back, feeling unappreciated and shot down. Seemingly, no one knew that you had grown the ingredients and supplied the recipe apart from Marnie, who had stewed it in Lewis. You glanced over to see Lewis laughing at the, with the townsfolk, all asking him about his recipe. Oh my god, kill him. <laughs> oh my god, this guy. Oh my god. He doesn't even, he doesn't even have the room to grow shit. <laughs> It's like Anarchy, when, new mayor. Yeah, it's like when Pierre is like, "Yeah, I grew this all in my in my yard." No, that's when like people are like, "Yeah, can you believe that the Pierre can grow his own vegetables?" And like he's just like taking credit for our shit. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, where does he live? He's just like, where does he even get his seeds? What Pierre? Yeah. I think he gets them shipped in, but like he, I mean, he lives in the shop. So he doesn't have like a farm of his own. No. I mean, his wife has, like, a tea leaf thing, but, like, he's gotten over into farm, so he just takes our own crops and takes credit for it. Oh my god. I know, what a bitch. <laughs> you knew that you had to get yourself out of the vicinity of the beach quickly before your anger finally boiled over. You turned to the beach beside you, deciding in the moment to go for a walk to calm down. Harvey had noticed you began to walk away from the luau and cleared his throat cleared his th wait yeah cleared, cleared his throw quickly to gain the attention of the townsfolk <laughs> <laughs> oh god my brain corrected it my bad <laughs> i was confused too i was like what like like water troll through yeah what is this cleared his through <laughs> ahem atten uh, excuse me everyone he announced everyone glancing at him in a confused manner you turned to see harvey's face in the crowd I'm sorry, Mary Lewis, but th that isn't fair, he began. Lewis's face shifted from a content smile to a sour frown. You didn't make the recipe or supply the vegetables. Harvey glanced in your direction. Bill supplied the recipe and grew the vegetables on her farm herself. You raise your eyebrow and widen your eyes in shock in shock horror. Not sure if Harvey- shock horror. Yeah, shock horror. <laughs> it's a step above shock. Yeah, and a step above horror. <laughs> <laughs> 
Not sure if Harvey had really just done what you thought he had just done. The other villagers shifted their gaze between you, Harvey, and Lewis, who looked somewhat embarrassed. That's- that's preposterous, Lewis. Oh my god, I can't believe this bitch is fucking denying it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, what are you even denying? Yeah, fucking anarchy! <laughs> anarchy! Lewis frowned, the governor now staring directly at you after following everyone else's eyeline that has- that was already on you. Is that true, Lewis? The gardener the- not the gardener! <laughs> the governor pro- proted. <laughs> You're right. I'm sorry, Bill. I just really wanted to impress the governor. Lewis sighed, looking devastated that he had been caught out lying. I apologize for taking credit for your soup. It's delicious, and you deserve all the credit. Lewis apologized. A look of defeat washed over his face. The governor was now frowning, realizing that the mayor ha has been actually lying to him the whole time. Demote him. Demote. <laughs> Someone else run for mayor. We run for mayor. <laughs> we run for mayor, yes. Yeah, I wish you could. We or win. Harvey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Harvey does it. Mayor right. Doctor. Yeah. Let's go, Dr. Mayor. <laughs> Dr. Mayor yeah. Harvey. Yeah. <laughs> Full name. <laughs> Dr. Mayor Harvey. <laughs> Mr. Dr. Mayor Harvey Jr. Actually, since he is a doctor, I think I think the doctor title like stays forever. Because I had a principal in high school that had a PhD, so like, even though it's like technically the principal, we would always call her Dr. Blank. Cause she Damn, I'm gonna like get a doctorate and then work at McDonald's and have my coworkers <laughs> call me doctor. Nice. <laughs> just to spite them. Yeah, just add, just out of spite to just... <laughs> You're gonna go and get a PhD just to work at fucking McDonald's? <laughs> That's the biggest waste of money. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, popcorn to you, my guy. <laughs> Okay, uh, it's on however, right? Yeah. Okay. However, the townsfolk had begun to congratulate you on your delicious soup. You couldn't help but smile, feeling a sense of validation and appreciation from Harvey's defense. It was a great feeling to know that your hard work had finally, finally been recognized, and that you were immensely grateful that Harvey had realized and stuck up for you. Some part of you felt strangely bad for the mayor in one way. You know he didn't mean any real harm. Yes, he did. Bitch, I don't care. You took the credit. sound of laughter. <laughs> yeah, he took credit, and he just didn't. You know, he apologized not because he took credit, but he because he got caught. Yeah. The sound of laughter and music filled the air as the townspeople continued to enjoy the festivities. Mayor Lewis was no longer at the center of attention, and everyone was having a good time. You found yourself surrounded by your friends such as Emily and Leah chatting and laughing over plates of delicious food. As the crowd died down and the sun began to set, you could see the governor beginning to make his way to leave, giving Lewis a short and blunt goodbye before exiting. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Apart from the hiccup of the soup, everyone seemed to have really enjoyed the luau. You knew you had to talk to Lewis eventually, so you began to approach him to talk. I know you didn't mean any real harm. Just maybe don't lie next time. You half smiled in a reassuring way. Yes, I am sorry. I fear I may have done more damage than good. Lewis frowns, not saying another word and turning to leave instead. You felt slightly hard done by his response, but you refused to let that ruin the amazing day you had. Everyone slowly filtered out, leaving just you and a few others left on the beach. You decided to stroll down the beach after the luau, the sun slowly setting on the horizon. The now cool sand beneath your feet and the sound of the waves lapping against the shore providing a soothing atmosphere. Ooh, I like that sentence. Yeah, that was pretty good. I like that. There's like these occasional sentences that have like really good imagery. Yeah, this author knows how to write fucking- I love me some good imagery, like really immersing yourself into a book. This author knows how to do it. <laughs> yeah. As you walked, you noticed the sky changing colors from a fiery orange to a soft pink and finally a deep shade of blue. You paused for a moment to take in the beauty of the sunset, feeling grateful for this moment of peace after a very busy day. Continuing your walk, you noticed some of your fellow villagers still on the beach, some sitting around the bonfire, others playing games or simply enjoying the cool evening breeze. You decided to sit and take in the atmosphere by yourself, somewhat reflecting on the day and your overall journey so far in the valley. As you sat laughed, lost in thought, you suddenly felt someone sit down next to you. You turned to see Harvey looking tired but content. 
Yes! Yes! <laughs> Smash! <laughs> Mind if I join you? He asked, offering a small smile. Oh, of course, he smiled, welcoming his company. We seem to find each other in these quiet moments, don't we? Harvey chuckled, leaning back against the sand. We do seem to, he replied, he replied smiling. I thought you left a while ago. No, I stuck around to relax a bit more, he sighed. Thank you for sticking up for me today. You really risked your neck for me there. He smiled, turning to look at him for the time, for the first time since he had sat down next to you. Don't mention it. Lewis often takes credit for things which aren't his to take credit for, but he doesn't take credit for the things that are wrong in this town. Facts. Typical Facts. politician. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say like typical fucking like I was about to say typical Republican. <laughs> <laughs> he chuckled. You let out a little, a, sil a slight giggle, the weight of the world seemingly falling off of your shoulders. Harvey was wearing a shirt just like before with the first few buttons unbuttoned, and his typical work trousers, his glasses reflecting the beautiful shades of blue that bled across the sky before the both of you. You found yourself lost in thought, admiring the way Harvey's hair, uh, Harvey's hair blew gently in the mild wind whilst the warmth of his hand as it brushed against yours slightly at certain intervals. Harvey too seemed to enjoy enjoy seemed to be enjoying the peaceful moment. His eyes were closed, a soft smile on his lips, and his body seemed to be naturally relaxed next to yours. Is work busy for you? you asked, being polite. Not particularly. I'm just very bored on my own in the clinic, Harvey sighed, gazing out across into the ocean or into the horizon. Well, I get that. I feel the same sometimes, he mumbled, trying not to seem vulnerable. I understand, it's quite isolating to live alone, he mentioned, absorbing every word you said. You sat in comfortable silence for a few moments, watching the waves together. You couldn't help but notice how relaxed and at peace Harvey looked, like he couldn't have a care in the world at this moment. Are you okay? you asked, breaking the silence. Harvey looked over at you, looking slightly surprised. What do you mean? You just seem really relaxed. Like you're not worried about anything, you mentioned, your eyes meeting his. In the soft moonlight, you were certain that he could see the glimmer of admiration in your gaze, making his heart race. Harvey chuckled. I guess I am pretty relaxed right now, he began, gazing into your eyes. Sometimes Ooh. life throws, oh my god, he's doing it, he's oh looking god. at you. Oh my, oh my god. <laughs> Faint. <laughs> Sometimes life throws these strangely timed distractions at you just when you need them. His eyes moved to your lips. Without a word, you leaned closer together, the space between the both of you growing smaller and smaller. You begun to feel Harvey's breath against your skin, and the heat em emanating from his body, only adding to the intensity of the moment. He leaned in closer, his lips just inches away from yours, and you could feel your heart racing. I've never been so happy to read a paragraph in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, do you see this comment right here? How <laughs> late I'm reading them actually right now. Yeah, oh maybe next time- Oh, wait. Oh maybe next time, but his lucky purple shorts in there, and then we'll see if it's a family recipe. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> oh god, I can't wait, they're gonna kiss. <laughs> they're doing it. Yes, I've never been so happy. Only took ten chapters. Yeah, let's go. I mean, this was listed as a slow burner. <laughs> True. Oh my god, I, I'm not my proudest moment right now, but I am reading a, like a Sanji X reader right now, and like that shit is like 139 parts. Um, we finally had like a first kiss at like part 79. <laughs> you are very invested, aren't you? It's so good. <laughs> one of the best ones I've ever read. I, I gotta shout it out at some point, because I don't think anyone's <laughs> gonna sit through and read it with me. <laughs> Alright, chapter 9, you and I. Let's fucking go. He leaned in closer, his lips just inches away from yours, and you can feel your heart racing. But suddenly, you felt the need to pull away, feeling overwhelmed by your emotions. <laughs> no! No Riz for us! <laughs> no Riz. Yeah, we got fucking negative Riz. Girl, Bill, no! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Harvey, you said, standing up and dusting your clothes in a panic. 
I just- I can't do this right now. You turned and ran away, feeling embarrassed and unsure of your feeling- <laughs> Girl! <laughs> I'm sure. Man, you- <sighs> Come on, man. This sucks. <laughs> Bill! Har Harvey desperately called out, his efforts going unheard by you. Harvey watched in confusion as you got up and, and, and essentially ran away from him. He felt conf confused and disappointed, unable to process what had just happened. The connection between the both of you wasn't a figment of his imagination, was it? You left Harvey. You left Harvey say there, <laughs> unsure of what to do next. I can't. You say there, Harvey. Yeah, say say there. <laughs> say right there. I might start saying that now. Yeah. This is a fun day. Yeah. Set on the beach, lost in thought, he wondered if he misread the situation. No, he didn't. We're just idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Dumb. Yeah, it's like the well, what the fuck's the stupid hat that they give you? It's like the dunce. <laughs> The dunce cap? Yeah, that's what Bill needs to wear, is the dunce. <laughs> Maybe he made a terrible mistake by trying to talk to you, let alone kiss you. He didn't want to make you feel uncomfortable or pressured to do anything after all. Eventually, he stood up and headed back to the clinic. As he walked along the beach and gazed up at the orange sky beyond the sea, he couldn't help but feel somewhat empty. He understood what that maybe you needed time and space to figure things out. He respected your decision regardless and hoped that you would reach out to him when you were ready. In the meantime, he promised himself that he would focus on his work and try not to dwell about what could have what it could been. I'm gonna dwell on it though. <laughs> Bullshit! <laughs> That's the thing. You knew that you had a connection with Harvey, but you weren't ready to take the next step. It felt too strange. When it came to romantic relationships, you had always been hesitant. You had seen how it could complicate people's lives and cause more harm than good. You had your own fair share of heartbreak in that you, when you were younger, and you were not risking to feel those painful emotions all over again. For you, your farm and your community were of top priorities. You didn't want anything to get in the way of that. <laughs> I can't- <laughs> this is stupid! <laughs> Work before love. Yeah, I guess. Girls gotta get like make like six figures a year before she could find love, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> She's grinding. Yeah. Despite this, nothing could stop you from feeling drawn to Harvey. There was something about him that made your heart skip a beat, even though you tried to ignore it. But as much as you truly liked Harvey, you know that pursuing a romantic relationship with him would be too risky. Why? <laughs> too risky. What yeah. if it doesn't work out and he raises his prices at the clinic? Yeah, out of spite, he raises it just for us. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't want to jeopardize your friendship or your professional relationship with him, so you tried your best to push your feelings aside and focus on other things, hoping that they would eventually fade away. You knew that you had had a close call with love, one of which would be detrimental. Put that on the words pronounced list. <laughs> a plus one. Yeah! <laughs> so what are we, like, two and one so far? <laughs> Something like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Alright. All, all you. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Day one, fall. As the heat of summer faded away, the leaves in the valley began to change their colors, signaling the arrival of fall. The once lush green trees turned into fiery shades of red, orange, and yellow, painting a beautiful picture against the clear blue sky. The air was crisp and cool, and the sound of leaves crunching underfoot became a more familiar sound. Again, another good paragraph. Alright, point for author. <laughs> yeah, plus one author. Yeah, actually that's plus two, because that was like two imageries now that I've liked. <laughs> oh, true. No, there's like probably more that I skipped over, but there's some good yeah. ones in here. Yeah, shout out to you, Gazelle Im Imagines. <laughs> <laughs> what, how did you pronounce it the first time again? I... Oh yeah, Gazelle Images. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it was like Gazelle Images. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I pronounced oh, no. so wrong. <laughs> you were excited to see your new fall crops grow and flourish under your care. Care. You had carefully selected a variety of crops that were well suited for the fall weather, including pumpkins, cranberries, and yams. You had also decided to take on the challenge of growing artichokes and beets, despite hearing that they were notoriously difficult to cultivate. 
Each day, you spend hours tending to your, scrop, your crops, making sure to water them regularly and remove any pesky weeds. As the weeks went by, you noticed that your new crops were beginning to sprout and grow. The, the pumpkins slowly turned from green to vibrant orange, and the cranberries ripened into a deep red, and the yams grew plump and delicious. But you hadn't heard from Harvey, and you were trying your best to avoid him. You found yourself actively avoiding Harvey after the awkward encounter on the beach. Whenever you were called into the clinic for a checkup or injury, you found excuses to keep the conversation short and to the point. You couldn't help but feel embarrassed and unsure of your feelings toward them. Rip. I'm so disappointed in Bill Cipher right now. <laughs> <laughs> you knew that you had a strong connection with Harvey, but the thought of a romantic relationship with him made you anxious. You had always been someone who preferred to focus on your work and your farm, and the idea of getting involved in a romantic relationship was something that you saw as a hindrance to your life. Damn, Barbie's a hindrance. Oh my god, that's so mean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you just make less than me, um, so you're just a hindrance to me. Yeah. <laughs> man, she really Imagine. is trying to make six figures before she goes out and finds a man. <laughs> Harvey obviously noticed this and tried his best to avoid you too. You knew what you had done was unfair to him. On day 6 of fall, a particularly cold day, you decided to once again venture into the mines. However, at this time you were more prepared. You knew you couldn't make the same mistakes as last time, and you wanted to overcome your fears of the mines since your previous mishap. You had gathered all the necessary tools, including a pickaxe, a shovel, a lantern, and plenty of food and water to sustain you during your journey. Wait, there's a lantern in this game? There's a- no, I don't think so. I mean, there's- there's the glow ring, but that's pretty much it. <laughs> oh, I was gonna say, yeah. that'd be cool to have. Uh, you also made sure to dress warmly and rest- uh, wear sturdy boots to protect your feet. Additionally, you have purchased a new and much sharper short- sword, uh, which could cut through a slime with one swipe effortlessly. Ooh, wonder what sword that is. Yeah, I'm trying to think of the swords that Peter had when he was in the mines that he just picked up. <laughs> yeah. He was like getting all of these random rare swords, and I was like, what the heck? I didn't get a single one. Yeah. Watch, he's gonna get every sword in the game. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day, you were in need of copper and iron, and there was only one way to obtain them. Before you headed north to the mines, you stopped by at the clinic, if it. <laughs> Specifically, at a time you knew Harvey would not be working to pick up some emergency energy tonic, just in case. Morning, Maru. You smiled weakly, uh, weakly greeting her. Wait, I thought he said he lived alone. There's another person there. Well, Maru works at the clinic, but he, like, lives alone upstairs from the clinic. <laughs> no, where does Maru live? She lives at with Robin. That's her daughter. Oh, okay. Oh my god, you gotta that. get up on your Stardew Valley lore, dude. <laughs> oh my gosh, I have all these connections. Yeah. <laughs> Morning, Bill. I haven't seen you in here in months, she beamed. Uh, uh, well, yes, I have been busy. He coughed to distract her and change topic. Do you think I could purchase some energy tonic, please? He smiled. Of course, that will be 1,000 gold, please. She said as she placed a remedy on the counter. You paid her the correct amount and thanked her. Are you planning to do a lot of tedious farm work today? She politely questions. No, actually, just heading to the mines for some copper, you replied, smiling, turning to leave. Oh, Bill, Maru called out as he turned to leave. Dr. Harvey has been worried about you. He really hasn't been himself since the Luau. Do you think you could... What has he said about the Luau? He snapped slightly. Oh, nothing. He just hasn't been the same since. I thought you were good friends and maybe you could chat to him. He won't talk to me, she said, looking slightly defeated. Oh, okay, I will, he replied. Your cheeks flushed slightly. You turned towards the exit, your mind heavy with guilt. Dang. <laughs> maybe you shouldn't have ditched him. Yeah. <laughs> hey, maybe you shouldn't have fucking edged him like that, my guy. Just, just a thought. <laughs> Alright, I'll pop for you here. Man, what the fuck? Alright. <laughs> <laughs> I kid, I kid, I, I read now. <laughs> <laughs> read! I, I'm trying! It's hard! <laughs> As you I was struggling there too for a second. Yeah, I, I, yeah, under the chair. Not under the chair. <laughs> 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 I, 
As you walk through the valley, you try to push your guilty feelings away and instead focus on the feelings of excitement building up inside of you instead. You are determined to find something valuable, something that would make your journey worthwhile. But you can find an amethyst and then give it to Abigail, and then she'd be like, Wow, thank you for the snack, and then just bite the rock. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking kid you not. She does do that, doesn't she? Yeah, she does. <laughs> Upon arriving to the mines, you took a deep breath and, and descended into the depths. You were once again awed by the vastness of the underground tunnels and the glittering gems that adored the walls. You swung your pickaxe in determination, chipping away at the rocks and dirt in search of something valuable. At the clinic. <laughs> Harvey entered the clinic, waiting his shift. He greeted Mario. Morning, Mario. Oh. Mario. <laughs> I, I just I, I thought I could slip by. <laughs> you pointed it out. <laughs> I read it too fast. Morning, Maru. <laughs> he, Morning, Luigi. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he does wear green. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, he does. Yeah. He's he weakly smiled, gently hanging his green coat on the rack. Morning, Doctor Harvey. He's she smiled back. Any patients? Harvey questioned, already predetermining the answer. No, but we did sell a, sell and <laughs> an energy toxic tonic. Sorry, toxic. <laughs> that's the opposite of what it's. <laughs> he, she beamed proudly. The first purchase of the clinic in weeks. Oh, really? By who? Uh, don't you mean by whom? Anyway, <laughs> Harvey beamed, surprised. <laughs> Bill gently, uh, Har Maru gently spoke. Oh. Farming is a tough gig, I suppose. He sighed, turning to the do to the door of his office. No, actually. She mentioned she was going to go into the mines. Harvey turned in, s in slight horror to meet Maru's gaze. Isn't it oh, yeah. <laughs> Isn't it great that even after her previous accident, she managed to overcome her fears and still explore? Maru sighed, slightly envious of your adventures. Sh she's doing what? <laughs> <laughs> Harvey explained in worry. Mining? Maru stuttered. Without thinking, Harvey didn't waste any time and immediately grabbed his coat, heading towards the mines to find you. Maru was left staring at the clinic door, worried for you and Harvey's safety. <laughs> <laughs> As he ran to the mines, Harvey's heart was pounding in fear and worry. He had, he had to find you before something terrible happened, just like before. When he finally arrived at the entrance of the mines, he could see a couple of torches flickering in the distance. He called out your name, hoping to get a response. <laughs> Bill! <laughs> I, I love that we named her Bill. It's so funny. I should have named it something different, honestly. Yeah, that's your fault, L on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I just, like, it just gets in the moment, and then he just suddenly says Bill, and I'm just like, oh, fucking A. Yeah, maybe you should have picked the. Well, to be fair, we've had some silly names on here before. Like, me and Cameron were reading one, and we named the girl Keyboard, so... <laughs> Yeah. Should have named it something feminine. Yeah. I, at least like Billa or something. Yeah. Well, <laughs> there was another one that I think me and Coda were reading. We named the girl Shotgun. So there's no creativity. <laughs> <laughs> Just naming these people after objects at this rate. <laughs> Chair. Table. <laughs> That's what we should name the next one. <laughs> Bill, he called out, unaware that he only attracted unwanted, dangerous attention to himself. He grabbed a torch from the wall and began searching the depths of the mines. He had a sinking feeling in his gut th as he thought about the potential dangers lurking in the dark and unfamiliar tunnels. As he made his way deeper into the mines, he couldn't help but feel a sense of unease. The air was thick and musty, and he could barely see in front of him, which is the dimly lit of his uh, lantern, which I thought he grabbed the torch, but cool. <laughs> Harvey continued on, trying to follow the sounds of your pickaxe hitting the sharp rock. I'm just- <laughs> in oars. No. <laughs> First thing I thought of was the sound effect when you- when you're mining. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like hearing that. <laughs> but the sound only seemed to be coming from all di different directions, and he soon found himself lost in a maze of tunnels. Panic set in as Harvey realized he had no idea where he was or how to get back. Meanwhile, you were completely unaware of Harvey- that- Har of Harvey nearby. <laughs> uh, you had managed to find some copper and ore, and you had even defeated several slimes and shadow monsters in the process. You felt very proud of what you have achieved in such a short period of time, overcoming your fears with s with a sense of furiousness. Fierceness! Fierceness! Yep. <laughs> but you read it, right? Yes. 
That was one. Yeah, oh yeah, it was like half a point. <laughs> 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 Further up in the mines, Harvey kept moving. Suddenly, Harvey heard a strange what the queeshing? Squelching. Squelch. It's like it's like point. a uh, I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> Just say squish. <laughs> squish noise coming from from behind him as he descended deeper. He tensed up, gripping his torch. So he, now he has a torch. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just switch back. Yeah. Every time I we swear, I feel like there's two writers because like sometimes it's just like really high quality imagery, and then the next paragraph there's just, like seven typos. Yeah, I mean, it could be like they were really feeling like writing, and then like the next day they're like just slam their hands on the keyboard, and they're, <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, he he grip, gripping his torch tightly, he turned to see a group of slimes, their jelly-like bodies pulsing and wriggling before him. Harvey had heard stories about these creatures before. They were harmless on their own, but could be dangerous in large groups. Horrified that he found himself backed into a corner. One jumped towards him, attacking his leg. <laughs> Harvey quickly kicked the slime off his leg, unaware of the damage underneath his trouser leg. You heard a commotion around the corner and decided to follow the sounds. That is when you saw Harvey being ambushed by a group of slimes. <laughs> I'll, do the, I'll do the slime jumping effect. Okay. Boop. Boop. <laughs> oh boop. my god, he's being attacked right now! <laughs> <laughs> it's just a bunch of bloops now. Yeah. Bloop. <laughs> Bloop. <laughs> a terrified look in his face. Uh, man, I can't. Man, I need I need the author to be more detailed about the imagery of Harvey being slimed. Uh, please and thank you. <laughs> As the slimes burned off all of his clothes except his <laughs> undergarments, <laughs> he let out of the gas. <laughs> oh, Bill. <laughs> now I just that. Uh... I love that you included her name. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. The slimy creatures have had in Corden, and Harvey was struggling to fend them off with his torch. Harvey, you called out, the slimes turning their attention towards you, giving Harvey an opportunity to escape. You couldn't understand why Harvey was down this far in the mines, considering how wary he was of them. Bill, no! He called back. Without hesitation, you ran towards the slime, swinging your sword. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> As the slimes charge towards you, you swing your sword with all your might, hitting them one by one. The slimes splattered and ooze, but you kept fighting, determined to protect yourself and most importantly, Harvey. Oh my god, we think he's important! <laughs> <laughs> Finally, the last slime fell and you let out a sigh of relief, panting in process. You turned to Harvey, who was breathing heavily, his wounds seeping blood down his leg. Harvey, what the hell are you doing down here? The farmer was- oh, whispered, sorry. <laughs> Uh, rushing to Harvey's aid. I came to find you, Harvey began, cutting himself off. You whispered, Stay still and quiet. They can smell fear. <laughs> I... That was perfect. <laughs> you and Harvey sat down very slowly to avoid making too much noise. You kneeled beside him as he hissed in pain. However, you had already noticed a dark stain on his trouser leg and it wasn't looking good. Ah, oh, shit. Looks like we're gonna have to amputate. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that's the only option. Alright, just hold on to this, and I'm just gonna one, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> hold on to that torch. Yeah, oh, what, what's the thing that did back in, like, like World War One before, like, like, oh, sh I forgot the name of the medication. It's not medication, so what, it, anesthesia, yeah, yeah. But they're like, all right, yeah, yeah. yeah, they're like, alright, go ahead and shove this rag into your mouth, and, uh, uh real quick, just, uh, one, <laughs> <laughs> cut off like body parts that were infected <laughs> yeah they did not have uh, very good medication back then unfortunately yeah. all right chapter 10 i do anything for you looks like we're finally gonna get the romance that i've been craving for so long <laughs> <laughs> all right you, you go it's, it's your tone man <laughs> i got i got it i got it all right all right <laughs> Alright, yeah. chapter 10, I'll do anything for you. You took a bandage from your backpack and slowly rolled it up to reveal the wound beneath it. It was a fairly deep gash, but luckily it didn't seem to be bleeding too much anymore. Whoa, this is going what? to hurt, horror. But the slimes don't have, like, arms or legs. They, they're just jelly. So, what don't made they, that- Don't they, like, burn you? 
They do? I don't remember that. Something like that. <laughs> oh, I guess. I'll go with that. That That's now canon now. Because, <laughs> like, to, to eat stuff, they have to, like, digest... I don't know, they're just like a blob of stomach acid. Wait, they're- wait, really? I think so. I mean, I could be wrong. Yeah, I'll believe like, you. <laughs> how else do they eat stuff? Besides, like, basically digesting them. Yeah, I guess. Like, it just enters their body and it just burns. I, I, no, that makes sense now. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to hurt hard. He gave you a weak smile, knowing what you had to do. You took your spare jumper and applied pressure to the leg to stop any additional bleeding, whilst you rummaged with your other hand through your bag to find your body, your bottle of water. Once you found it, you unscrewed the cap and removed the jumper, pouring the water onto the wound to clean it. Harvey winced in pain, throwing his head back with his eyes closed tight. It'll be okay, just stay with me, Harv, do not pass out, he whispered as he began to unroll the bandage. I'm sorry, I should have trusted your ability, Harvey muttered leaning his head against the rock beneath, behind him. I got so worried, I I just wanted to make sure you were safe. Don't apologize, I understand, he mumbled as you carefully wrapped the bandage around his wound. You did your best to be gentle, but even the slightest touch made him flinch. You could see the pain etched on his face, and you knew that the wound would have been stinging. Once you had finished dressing his wound, you gently helped Harvey to his feet, you put your arm around his shoulders in order to support him, and slowly made your way out of the mine. Oh my god, contact! They touched each other! Oh my god, they ah, touched hands! Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! As you walked, you talked to him softly, trying to keep him calm and focused. You finally broke daylight, Harvey seemingly exhausted. Dusk was approaching, and you slowly walked Harvey to his clinic. You even made sure to take breaks every so often to ensure that Harvey didn't overexert himself even more than he already did. I am so lucky you found me, Bill. Harvey sighed as he walked. Harvey, what the hell were you doing? You knew from my previous ex previous experience that the mines are not a safe place for someone who doesn't understand them. You firmly spoke, worried beyond belief. Well, exactly. After hearing you had gone back down again, I freaked out. I couldn't bear to think of you getting hurt again. Not like that, he frowned. Oh my god, oh my god, he cares about us! Oh my god! <laughs> Do you think it's he okay. likes us? <laughs> <laughs> no, it can't be. Oh damn it. There's no way. Side of the relationship for us. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, don't worry about it now. You are one silly fool, Harvey. You weakly smiled to which he reciprocated. You arrived back at the clinic, Harvey unlocked the door and immediately sat down in his office to tend to the wound himself with proper equipment. He slowly unwrapped the bandage and hissed in pain once again as he watched from the seat opposite, offering to help in any way possible. Harvey began to redress the wound, applying a proper antiseptic to the area before bandaging it. Once he had finished, he sighed and gently tried to move his leg from the rest. Let me take you to your room, you insisted, offering a shoulder to lean on. You assisted Harvey up the stairs, he seemed to limp the whole way. You could feel his weight leaning on you, so you adjusted your stance to help him maintain his balance. Take it easy, you said slowly, or you said softly. <laughs> We're almost there. As Harvey reached the top of the stairs with your help, he began to limp to his sofa, falling in force to the seat below. Pulling his tie loose and leaning back in relief, he closed his eyes, his legs extended in front of him. You walked to the sink to pour Harvey a glass of water. He began to unbutton his shirt, which was somewhat ripped and dirty, revealing his chest. Hot. His chest. His bare, hairy chest. Ooh, shit, hold huh? <laughs> on. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know I'm how I did that. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> I, like, I, like, I slammed my head down to say, like, smash, and I hit the, <laughs> the thing, so I went back and shot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know how I did that. That's really funny, though. <laughs> I'm impressed, Bill. It really seemed like you knew what you were doing in that mine, Harvey added, his moods seeming slightly lifted. I just had to act fast. Survival instincts kicked in, you replied, bringing Harvey to glass. Me, the medical professional, didn't even need to advise you. You just knew what to do, he spoke. He softly spoke, taking a sip of the water. Harvey paused, his eyes wandering to you in front of him. I, I may have died. Harvey began, but before he could complete his sentence, he sat down next to Harvey and put your arm around him. Ooh, shit! <laughs> we grew some riz! 
She's gonna pull back last second. Yeah, oh my god, if she does, I'm gonna fucking cry. <laughs> you felt him relax a little, his cheeks turning red as he began to lean his head on your shoulder. You could feel his heartbeat slowing down, and his breathing become steadier, like the anxiety was wearing off. I'll do anything for you, so don't- uh, so I don't regret it. Oh, he said the line! I was like, oh my god, he, he said the title! <laughs> <laughs> Harvey sighed, his cheeks blushing his bl his cheeks blushing, showing embarrassment. He smiled in response, not feeling as if he needed to add anything. Alright, I'll pop for you for the rest. Alright. Even though there's not a lot. <laughs> Don't worry, you let me read the good shit. <laughs> <laughs> he held Harvey like that for a while, letting him rest and recover. You felt a connection stronger than titanium between the two of you in this moment. Acting as if the previous encounter at the Luau didn't even happen. You had both been through a... Havery exp- wait, yep, yeah, fuck. Harrowing. <laughs> a harrowing experience in the mines. <laughs> and the fact that you had come to Harvey's rescue like he had to you only deepened your bond. You knew that you couldn't ignore the way that Harvey made you really feel. As you gazed into his eyes, you saw a vulnerability and tenderness that touched your heart in a way that no other could. You had always been drawn to his kindness and intelligence, but now you saw him in a new light. A much more vulnerable light. <laughs> Smash! <laughs> as you sat together, talking and laughing, it was as though the rest of the world had fallen away. You told jokes to try and lighten the mood to get Harvey to relax after the mines. Although, you have done that already just by being there with him. In that moment, it was just the two of you, bound together by shared experience and growing attraction. You gently stroked his hair as you both closed your eyes. You both sat together on the sofa, your bodies pressed up against each other as you drifted off to sleep. Although you were looking after him, you ended up sleeping on him mostly whisked on the sofa, his large arms enveloping you closer to him. There was no going back now, was there? Yes! <laughs> oh wait, you forgot to read the part, uh, right below. Wait, did? The next morning, you walked back to the farm, as if nothing had happened. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. I, I was like, wait a minute, I did? <laughs> you know how pissed I would've been if you just like, Oh wait, hold on, you missed the part, I'll read. We woke up and it was just a dream. <laughs> I think we have one more t time to read one more. We have to now. Very good part. Yeah. Chapter 11. I Wait, it's only the second day of fall and all that shit happened? Damn. Yeah. Man, we got insane Riz. Well, I guess I'll- since you read the majority of the last one. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Chapter 11. I apologize. Hopefully we're apologizing for flaking out like that on the, on the luau. <laughs> Alright, day two, fall. You woke still re- oh. No. You wanna read it? Yeah, I mean, like, I only read, like, four paragraphs in the last one, so. Oh, I guess, yeah, 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 true. Day two, fall. You you awoke, still wrapped up in Harvey's embrace. He had not moved a lot during his sleep, and you were certain he had passed out from exhaustion. <laughs> Same, I do that a lot. <laughs> You gently unraveled yourself and walked towards Harvey's kitchen in hopes of making yourself a coffee. Although Harvey's preached health religiously, several cardboards- Cardboard? Wait. Yep, that says cardboard. I, I thought Wait, that was- what? Wait, what? Several say cardboard? cardboard sleeves from ready meals adorned his surfaces. Huh. Wait, cardboard sleeves? What I don't know- that? Yeah, I don't know what that means. <laughs> I, I thought, like, I was trying maybe to Maybe it's just, like, packaging? I, maybe. I was trying to read cupboard. Like, like she opened, like, a <laughs> cabinet. <laughs> oh, anyway. Several cardboard sleeves with ready meals adorn his services, and his microwave looked, like, looked very well used. Oh, I think it's just, like, the stuff you put, like, hot pockets in or whatever. Oh, uh, <laughs> that like, makes sense. Cardboard stuff. This motherfucker's always preaching health meanwhile he's eating fucking, like, like five minute meals and hot pockets and coffee. <laughs> Maybe it's like emergency rations or something. Yeah. I mean, the clinic doesn't get that much business. He's got to afford something. Yeah, they said he sold a tonic like in two weeks. Like one tonic in two weeks. How is that business still alive? Yeah. 
Well, I guess he literally is the only doctor in town, so... <laughs> uh, scanning the apartment, you had also noticed several model airplanes on the shelf above his desk where there was some sort of radio seemed to sit. You boiled the kettle and poured the coffee... <sighs> God damn it. <laughs> Grudels? I think it's granules. Granules <laughs> into the... Let me check. What the fuck's I'm a granule? I'm checking myself. A granule is just like one coffee bean, basically. Oh, okay. Across the room, you saw Harvey being to stir, his arms sh stretching before him. Wait, no, I'm stupid. A granule is... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> a granule, like, you know, like, a sugar, like, one sugar granule? Like... <laughs> yeah, I use the definition and the example, but, like, you buy a bag of sugar, and then there's just, like, a bunch of... I'm I'll trying not to you. use the word granule. Was it like, like an a, ounce? It's like a particle. Of Is it like coffee substance. grounds? Co yeah, yeah, like coffee grounds. Then why did they just write coffee grounds? I think they're British. Okay, you know what? That makes sense. <laughs> Suddenly, Harvey's intercom buzzed. Hello, Dr. Harvey? A, a voice stuttered. It was Maru. Oh my god, are we really gonna be jealous right now? <laughs> Harvey struggled to rise, his leg twitching in pain as he clambered off the sofa. He looked back at you, a slight smile escaping his lips. He turned to the intercom, picking up the receiver. Harvey answered. Hello, Mara? Good morning, doctor. Jody's here to see you. She says there's something wrong with Vincent. Harvey sighed, knowing his work couldn't stop despite his injuries. Okay, Maru, I'm sorry. I overslept. I'll be right down. Putting down the receiver... Harvey turned to you. Thanks for yesterday, Bill. I owe you one. He smiled, looking so much shy. Well, I saved you because you were trying to save me. So doesn't it cancel out? You you giggled as you sling your backpack over. <laughs> I guess it does. You you did not want to overstay your welcome, and it seemed as if either neither of you wanted to talk about the luau. The day had already started and you haven't watered any of your crops yet or fed the chickens. I'll be on my way, you spoke, a s slight smile on your face as you did. Yes, I suppose you should. You have a lot of work to do, he sighed, taking his jacket off of his wardrobe. Take it easy, Doc, you tease, heading towards the door. <laughs> Later that day. <laughs> <laughs> as you just finished watering your crops, the cold fall wind whistled through the valley as you carried your fresh, your fresh chicken eggs in your basket. Later, you would sell them and rake up a nice profit for the season. You found yourself reflecting on your past in the city more than usual. Memories of your old life flooded your mind. The endless day is spent working at your stuffy office, staring at the computer screen until your eyes hurt, and the mental exhaustion routine of your 9-to-5 job. You remembered the constant pressure of meeting deadlines, the endless meetings, and the never-ending flow of emails that ended the flood that seems to flood your inbox. That's gonna be me soon. God damn it. <laughs> Wait, are you like doing an office job? Well, soon. I got. It. I'm gonna get an offer Monday about it. <laughs> Ooh. I know. I'm so fucking excited. <laughs> but like, I'm just realizing it's gonna be this. It pays more though. Yeah. I kind of lied to to them a little bit. Because they asked how much I'm currently making at my job, and I think I make 14, and I told them I make 17. That way they pay me equal to that, or more, so... <laughs> <laughs> you, you gotta do that sometimes. Yeah. These corporations are just... You, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, get that bread, get that head, and leave. <laughs> that, that's my <laughs> motto. <laughs> <laughs> and then there were the relationships, or rather, the disasters that they were. You have been through a lot. The breakups, the betrayals, the heartaches. <laughs> you had tried to find love in all the wrong places, but it never seemed to work out. You had given your heart and soul to people who didn't deserve it, and had left you feeling empty and alone. Man, way to fucking call me out, book. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> These feelings still crept up on your life to haunt you in different ways, the encounter at the luau with Harvey being the proof. You just didn't want to get hurt again. Oof. Yeah, that, that, yeah, big oof. 
that led you to wonder what hardships the people in Pelican Town had gone through themselves. You had heard that Jody's husband was away at war. I forgot that was a plot line. Oops. <laughs> oh Alex. yeah, like his uh, or her husband, uh, Kent. Yeah, something? yeah, he comes back in like the second year. So. Yeah, yeah. I saw someone make a mod where like you get to you get to somewhat marry Jody, and if you marry her in year one before before like the time thing, there's like a chance that he actually dies in war. <laughs> And then, there's, what the yeah, there's also another chance like he comes back and you're just married to his wife. <laughs> oh my god! I I can't lie. Ninety percent. Yeah. <laughs> oh Alex, my god. Alex's mom had died when he when he was very young, and Shane had to deal with the constant alcohol abuse. Man, this game's fucking dark. <laughs> what the heck? What happened in these like past two paragraphs? Yeah, we were just reflecting on our own reflection and asking ourselves the question, and then all of a sudden we we're like, "Wonder what they have to go deal with." Uh, Jody's that husband. That is a sentence right her. there. It was like <laughs> you had heard Jody's husband away that were yeah. Alex's mom had died when she was very young. Shane had been dealing with constant alcohol abuse. Yeah. Right, thanks. Happy think, thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> very happy. <laughs> You seem to know things about people, just through the word of mouth, but you haven't heard anything about Harvey's past. All you knew is that he was lonely, and he used to study and work in Zuzu City, just like you. I mean, that's all I know about him. He has a fear of heights. That's it. <laughs> ring, ring. <laughs> Your telephone was ringing from inside the house. You quickly jumped up and ran inside, picking up the phone. All right, all you, all I almost said all you, girl, but <laughs> all you. <laughs> all right. Good afternoon, Bill. Lewis spoke. You coughed in surprise. You hadn't really been in Lewis's good books, and he hadn't been in yours. Good afternoon, Mary Lewis. You replied bluntly through the phone. There was a moment of awkward silence before Mary Lewis cleared his throat and spoke again. I just wanted to further apologize for my behavior at the Luau. He began. I was out of line. You had never thought that Mary Lewis would apologize so thoroughly. Usually his pride got in the way. I accept your apology, Mary Lewis, you said, feeling a bit more at ease. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about? Uh, you know what? At Mary Lewis' redemption arc, I believe in it. Damn it. I don't, but go off, I guess. <laughs> I mean, he apologized, like, two or three times, you know? Okay, you know what, maybe. maybe if have he was really it. scumbag, I think he would just apologize once and then just be like, Hey, I already apologized. What do you want from me? Yeah, it starts gaslighting us. He's like, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> <laughs> Recipe at a luau. What is that? Yeah, I don't you sound... even know what a luau is. Yeah, you sound crazy right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, actually, he said, clearing his throat again. I wanted to let you know about a new initiative we're starting in the town. It's called the Pelican Town Community Center, and we're hoping to renovate the old buildings into a hub for social events and community gatherings. Oh, the uh, yeah, yeah, the community town center thing. Oh, we're, yeah. like, we're like turning in items, right? Yeah, yeah. I guess like in this one, they're doing fundraisers to do it, like build it back up. I see. That sounds interesting. You said intrigued. What can I do to help? Well, we're looking for volunteers to help with the renovations and the fundraising efforts. He explained. If you're interested, I can send you more information. You thought about it for a moment. Helping with the community center could be a good way to get more involved in town and meet new people. Sure, I'd be happy to help, you said. Please send me the details. Excellent, Mary Lewis said, sounding pleased. I'll send that over to you right away. Thank you for considering it, though. As you hung up the phone, you couldn't help but feel a bit surprised at how the conversation had turned out. Maybe Mary Lewis had finally had his redemption. I community guess. center. I guess he can have a redemption arc. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I see these like timeline skips or like the description of the next scenario, like community center or the next day, mm -hmm. I keep like in my head I keep reading it as a SpongeBob voice. Yeah. It's like two hours later. Or like <laughs> yeah, the next like, day. <laughs> yeah, it's like community center. <laughs> <laughs> community center. You arrived at the abandoned community center, and suddenly you felt a wave of sadness wash over you. The building looked as though it had been abandoned for years, with weeds and vines crawling up the walls, and the wooden supports looking dangerously unstable. You hesitated before taking a step closer, unsure if it was safe to even enter the building. You could see that the roof was leaking through the gaps, with water dripping down onto the ground below. 
The windows were all boarded up, and the door looked like it hadn't been opened in years. You wondered what had caused the community center to be left in such a state of disrepair. Had there been a lack of funding or interest? Had there been some kind of disaster that had led to its abandonment? Did no one else in the village care about it? With a deep breath, you reached out for the door handle and gave it a gentle push. To your surprise, it creaked open of ease, as if it had been waiting for someone to come inside. The musty smell of dust and dampness hit you as you stepped inside, but you couldn't help but feel a sense of excitement at the same time. You had the feeling that there was much more to this abandoned community center that, that met the eye. Suddenly, a breeze rolled through the air, sending chills down your spine. You felt something move in the dark, carefully avoiding the cracks, letting in the daylight. You strained your eyes, trying to see through the dark. You stood there for what felt like an eternity, watching for any slight movement or creak of the floorboards. Finally, you saw it again, a flicker of movement in the darkness. You took a cautious step forward, and suddenly the floor creaked loudly beneath your feet. Suddenly, a small green creature glided before you. You froze terrified. Oh shit! Oh right! <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, right! It was a Jumino, but you didn't know that. The creature was small, no more than a foot tall, with big curious eyes that seemed to be examining you. Its skin was a vibrant shade of green, and its little hands and feet looked nimble and quick. Oh, th that's so cute. I saw some Stardew Valley stuff while we were at GalaxyCon, and there was a plush of the Junimo. <laughs> <laughs> he was so cute. I would buy that. Yeah. Oh, he was absolutely adorable. <laughs> In a fit of panic, you took off, hurrying and never looking back. You remembered your encounters of slimes in the mines, and you were not looking for a repeat of that. You wondered how Harvey would feel knowing you put yourself in danger. There's no danger for this juvenile. Yeah, he's just, just a little guy. Tall. He's just a little guy. <laughs> I can kick it across the room. Yeah. I, I wouldn't do that. I, I mean, mind you, I wouldn't do that, but yeah. it's a foot tall. It's a perfect soccer ball height. I, I did think that's where the... Because I, I kind of, like, looked off to the side while you were reading, so, I, like, when you read In a Panic, my brain auto-filled that we, like, we took our shoe off and, like, flung, <laughs> flung that shit at it. <laughs> uh, little guys, like, he's just like, oh my god, a new friend, and we're like, Oh shit! And we ran out. <laughs> oh, poor Junimo. <laughs> poor little guy. Poor little dude. If I ever see a like a Jumino plush or something, I'm definitely buying one. Why didn't you- shit, I wish you said something. I could've got you that at GalaxyCon, my guy. <laughs> <laughs> no. I like collecting little little plush things. Oh, that thing was not a little plush. Alley. Yeah. <laughs> What the, what'd you think? You, you like in this book? <laughs> it's pretty good so far. It's actually following like the storyline, isn't it? Yeah. It is like picking up the community center stuff in like fall, but you know what? I'll let it slide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like you just started it now. You should have started in the spring or summer. Yeah, def yeah definitely in spring. Lewis is like... Man, this this old thing's been sitting here for a while. Hey, you want to go chill out in it? And then that's when like the story shit starts. For him. You can choose like the uh, community center or Jojo Mart, right? Yeah, but like, why would you use Jojo Mart? It's so much money. Why? What happens when you choose a Jojo Mart one? Like when you choose a Jojo Mart, they give you like a like a. Like a list of things that they'll fix, but you have to pay for it, and it's like a shit ton of money. No. Oh. So like. Yeah, but that sounds perfect for uh, Bill. Yeah. Bill's a money person. <laughs> yeah, she's making six figures. She's she's growing those pumpkins <laughs> and cranberries and shit. <laughs> I heard cranberries are actually like the most. What is it like the most profit crop? Yeah, for fall, absolutely. Any of the bush ones, because they come back, because you don't... Yeah, it's because it's one seed, and then it stays until the Yeah, and no, over. you can keep harvesting it. Yeah. Yeah, good good crop. Good cash crop. <laughs> Alright, we'll do that. We're, we'll, we'll do that for fall. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, uh, if you guys would like to read this book, I'll have a link down below for you guys to read as well. Uh, I think at the pace that we're going, we're gonna finish it by, uh, let me just, j let me just look at the calendar real quick. Um, probably this time next year? <laughs> 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 yeah, that, that probably seems right. <laughs> when 300 more chapters get released? Yeah, uh, I think from the last time we read, I think two or three more chapters got released, so <laughs> at the pace we're going, they're putting out more chapters than we're reading them. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> but, but, uh, anyway, uh, my name is Phoenix, this was, uh, Minho, and I guess we'll see you guys next time! Bye! Yeah.